Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how to use Unreal Live Link in iClone to connect the camera switcher and make a synchronized recording with timecode settings in Unreal. This workflow will save you a lot of time when working with these two programs, allowing you to utilize iClone's powerful animation tools to manipulate objects in Unreal for rapid rendering requirements. If you're not yet familiar with Unreal Live Link, please check out the dedicated tutorials on our Reels and Courses page. Let's start out by learning how to transfer objects from iClone to Unreal. In iClone, I have a project here that includes character animations as well as camera switching. You'll naturally want to make sure that you have the auto setup and Live Link plugins both installed. To begin the transfer of objects, open up the Live Link plugin in iClone and use the Scene Transfer mode to transfer the character and props in the scene over to Unreal. If there are objects in your scene classified as terrain, please be aware that you'll need to convert them to props before continuing on. Under Cameras, you'll see one called Editor Active Camera, which will contain the switching data, which we'll talk about more in a bit. Make sure the checkboxes are active for the character and all of the scene objects you want to transfer over, then hit Transfer File. Import time may vary depending on the complexity of your scene. Now what we want to do is link the cameras in both programs, so in iClone I'll ensure that my character and all of the cameras are selected, then click on Activate Link. The circles beside each item will become solid green once the link is successful. We then need to open up the Live Link panel in Unreal and choose iClone Live Link as our source. Once that's active, we can choose Editor Active Camera as our camera in Unreal. Once this is selected and we play back, you can see now that the camera switching is synchronized in both programs. It will also remain synchronized when you manually switch to different cameras in iClone. There is a more detailed tutorial dealing specifically with camera settings in iClone you can check out to learn more camera tips and tricks. Now that we've got the camera synchronized, let's take a look at recording in Unreal with Timecode Sync. You'll want to ensure that you have the Media Framework Utilities and Media IO Framework plugins installed here. On the toolbar in Unreal, you'll find an icon that allows you to create a new empty media profile for the Timecode Sync workflow. Go ahead and create a new one, and in Timecode Provider section, ensure that Override Project Settings is selected, and then choose Live Link as the Timecode Provider. Next, we'll choose our character under Subject Key, and set Evaluation to Latest. Finally, we need to set the frame rate to 60 to sync with iClone. Don't forget to save the settings before exiting. Back in the Unreal Live Link panel, we also need to set the Live Link Receiving Evaluation settings to Latest as well. Once that's set, let's head over and open up the Take Recorder panel and change the recording clock source to Timecode. I'm going to add two sources here, one for our character and the other for the Editor Active Camera. Once those sources are added, then you can simply press the Record button in the Take Recorder. The timeline won't move until you begin playback in iClone. As you can see, the playback in iClone and recording in Unreal are completely synchronized. Ok, lastly let's take a look at some additional rendering tips. Once the recording is complete, you'll find it in the Cinematics folder. When you open the take, there will be a track for camera cuts. If you press the camera icon on that track, it will switch the viewport playback perspective. In this case, there will be an error in playback because the Editor Active Camera is still constrained by the Live Link plugin. To remedy this, simply deactivate the linkage in the Live Link panel for that item. Playback will now be as it was originally recorded. However, the original character still exists in the scene, so to hide him, we can change the visible settings in the Detail panel. If you simply hide it from the outliner in Unreal, 
it will still show up in rendering or simulating. Let's move on to use the Legacy Movie Scene Capture option to render our sequence here. The format settings are ultimately up to you, however in this case I'm going to output to an MOV format with 1080p resolution and 60 frames per second. Once we finish capturing that movie sequence, we can play back and see the final result. In some cases, you may notice a flickering of certain props or surfaces in your scene when playing back like we see here. Sometimes a skeletal mesh can present this sort of issue in Unreal, so to fix it, you can simply change the model into a static mesh. To do so, find the original mesh in your content drawer, open it up, and classify it as a static mesh by using the button at the top. Once you have it ready, you can right click on the original mesh in the outliner and select replace selected actors with, and then choose your newly generated static mesh. Once that's done, you can go ahead and play back to see that flickering is gone. I'll render the scene again with the same settings and the final result will show the issue completely fixed. That's it for this tutorial guys. Thanks so much for watching, and be sure to check out our other Unreal Live Link tutorials from the Reillusion Courses page. I'll see you in the next video.